Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we are looking at the Dung Beetle Knight expansion for Kingdom Death Monster. We are going to unbox it. Uh, every Black Friday, I uh, Kingdom Death always has a sale, and I always try to add one more, sometimes two more expansions to my collection. And this year I finally got my hands on the Dung Beetle Knight, which is actually widely considered one of the best expansions for Kingdom Death. Now before we unbox this, I do want to mention our sponsor, Stone Valley Games. Dot com. This is your friendly distant game store run by Eric and Wendy. Go check them out. They have a lot of great stuff over there. They've got the new hotness. They got old classics. They've got everything in between. They also are able to ship to you for free if you're in the continental United States and you purchase $100 or more. Also, if you are in the military and you are overseas with an AA, AE, or AP address, they will ship to you for free. And if you are a returning customer, they also have a loyalty program. So go check them out. Tons of great stuff over there. There is a link in the description below. Okay, without anything else, let's get into the Dung Beetle Knight expansion for Kingdom Death Monster. All right, so... Let's see here. We've got, of course, the minis here, or yeah, they got the uh, the monster itself, and then of course you've got the behind it there, and kind of mixed in the different survivor minis that you can create. Uh, here we've got the various resources and stuff. So let's take a look at this. We'll look at a few of them, but I like to when I'm fighting new uh expansions i always like to kind of ex discover the stuff much of it the first time that i'm fighting but we have these strange resources so uh we've got the scarab shell cool and oily to the touch lantern light reveals a brilliant band of color dancing on its surface and it's considered a hide the scarab wing when soaked in water these vein filled wings gain some elasticity Underplate fungus, a corkscrew shaped fungus that grows in the empty channels between the dung beetle knight's armor plating. Preserved caustic dung. <laughs> the live cultures in this exotic mixture of mature dung have been preserved within a delicate airtight jelly casing. And cell. As the monster ages, this sticky and corrosive material builds between the thin layers of its scarab shells. It breaks down fecal product, preventing the nice joints from locking up. During Black Harvest, a restorer can make excellent use of a cell, using it to nearly perfect, near, using it to nearly perfect the final step of the calcific calcification process. So obviously, oh, oh, you know, oh, wow, okay, hold on, some of that were the actual dung. Dung Beetle Knight resources, and that's the stuff that, let's see, so we looked at a few of those already, so we won't look at any more of those, so let's look at, uh, let's just look at one of the Dung Beetle Knight's hunt events, alright, so, got sudden rumbling, you hear a low rumbling and suddenly see an enormous ball rolling right towards you, roll 1d10, if the result is equal to or lower than your courage, you stand your ground, otherwise, you dive away. If you stand your ground, let's see. Okay, so then stand your ground. You have to roll a d10 again. One through six, you are crushed. Suffer five event damage to monster level hit locations. Start the showdown knockdown. Or seven plus, you stop the ball with your bare hands. All survivors gain plus one courage. Or if you dive away, one through six, the ball clips you. Suffer two event damage to your arms. Or 7+, plus, you run around the ball using its momentum, heft yourself onto it, gain the propulsion drive fighting art. Very cool. Let's see, we've got quite a few hit locations, so let's just take a look at... Take a look at two of these real quick. Oh, the trap, of course, gotta look at that. Slam dunk, all survivors are doomed. Full move directly toward the attacker. If the monster is adjacent to the attacker, it picks them up and leaps high into the air. The monster lands next to the resin dung ball and slams the attacker inside. Uh, place the monster in any adjacent, uh, in any space adjacent to the ball. Attacker suffers five damage to monster level hit locations and gains the smell world survivor status card. All right, let's look at one more. Hidden mandibles. Okay, so it's got a reflex reaction. Perform ground pound, then perform basic action targeting the attacker. If you crit it, 
The attack ruins the precise mandibles inside the monster's face. If attacker is within two spaces of the monster and able to consume, they may spend two survival to nimbly eat a glob of resin spit, gaining plus one permanent evasion, and then becomes a persistent injury broken mouth, which will affect some AI cards. Quite a few hit locations there, too. Let's see... All right, AI card. Oh, wait, we've got some innovations down there. So these, let's see, AI, AI. Let's look at one of each type of AI card. So let's see, we've got, here's an advanced one. Ball top spin. I don't know what this means. That, like that is a new symbol there. Do not perform this card. Instead, perform ground pound and then basic action. The monster spins the ball in place, creating a vile stink cloud. All survivors within four spaces of the dung ball gain the dung milk status and lose monster level survival. Then we have a flow and then perform baller on collision. Any survivor, any survivors suffer five damage to monster level hit locations and knock back seven and then flow and then perform basic action. I mean, that already sounds pretty terrible. Uh, let's see. Here's a basic. Backspin shot. Again, this obviously is some sort of new terminology we'll have to figure out. Uh, pick target. Furthest stinky survivor or closest threat in field of view or no target defensive spit salve. And then the flow. And then turn to face target and perform baller. Move the ball 2d10 spaces through the target. On collision, any survivor suffer five damage to monster level hit locations. And then another flow. The backspin causes the ball to move again. Move the ball 1d10 spaces towards the monster. On collision, any survivors suffer five damage to monster level hit locations. All right, here's a special. It's a trait. Power forward. Um, pick target. At the start of each monster turn, pick target. Furthest stinky survivor or random survivor or no target defensive spit salve. And then a flow, turn to face the target, perform baller. So that's going to be obviously a theme here. Move the ball 2D to the spaces through the target on collision. Any survivor suffer five damage to monster level hit locations. And then a flow and then full move the monster towards the ball. And then we'll look at one legendary. We've got a sword master. It's a trait. When this comes into play, the monster gains plus one speed token, perform basic action. Replace the monster's basic action with pick target, closest threat, no target, defensive spit. And the flow, move and attack targets, three speed, two plus accuracy, six damage. And then after damage, bleed one, minus two to severe injury roll results. And then broken blade archive sword master. All right, and we've got three, three, yeah, three tactics cards. So let's just look at one quad strike. During the, mon during the survivor's turn, if the survivors and monster are arranged according to the diagram above, you may spend one survival to quad strike. If you do, each survivor rolls 1d10 and adds their strength attribute bonus. If the total result is equal to or higher than the monster's toughness, the monster is knocked down and suffers one wound. That is cool. And we've got uh, two disorders. Let's just look at one. Vermin Obsession. You love insects. While there's a bug patch terrain tile on the showdown board, you are so overwhelmed that you cannot spend survival. And then just one terrain, which is the resin dung ball. And see the expansion for detail. See the book for details. Obstacle, impassable, indestructible. This terrain cannot be destroyed or removed from the showdown board for any reason. And we can push it, though. Move the resin dung ball 1d5 spaces directly away from you. If you're not fighting the dung beetle knight, the ball is empty and you move it up to five spaces. We've got some innovations here. Subterrain Agriculture and Roundstone Training. Uh, I'm not going to look at the secret fighting art. Uh, we've got two fighting arts here, the Propulsion Drive and Carapace of Will. Of course, the uh, Dividers. And then we've got the Wet Resin Crafter. And that's how we'll be making all the different gear from the Dung Beetle Knight. And then we've, of course, got the book. So, some new rules here. And the artwork, of course, is phenomenal as always. So, besides the showdown, looks like there's one, two, three, four, 
four different events of some kind that you'll be able to go through when facing this guy. That's everything that comes in the box for the Dung Beetle Knight. Be sure to check back. Eventually, I'll get this uh, gameplay up for this guy. Uh, come back. We've also got coming up uh, instructional series for Keystone North America, for Aeon Trespass Odyssey, uh, Australia, and then also Frost Haven will be here soon as well. So come back, check all that out. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline. Mm -hmm.